Hey guys, welcome back to your good Tim. Welcome back to your challenge. So today we're going to talk about just a, a little brief discussion about Astea. So we, we were going over um, the Yamas and we took a little break for a couple days, but back to um, these concepts in yoga, Astea is um, non-stealing. So as yogis, we want to practice not stealing, of course, taking some, but something from somebody else, but also this idea of not taking more than our share. So um, one of my favorite quotes from Gandhi is that there is enough for everyone's need, but not everyone's greed. So just something interesting to think about, um, not taking more than your share. Okay, that's it. Um, let's begin standing today. So stand up at the top of your mat. Okay, when we practice, I, I like to vary the movements. We did a bunch of sun salutations, a bunch of like chaturanga style stuff. So today we're gonna focus more on our legs as we warm up. So we're gonna do some warm ups that look a little different than sun saluting. So we're gonna start off just holding our gravitational line. So step your right foot up and your left foot up. Just step them up a couple of times up and down and then let your feet plant. Okay, so now as you stand over your feet, let the feet open and as your feet start to open up, lean forward just slightly and lean back just slightly. And then balance your weight right over your ankles. So this is your gravitational line. And we wanna be able to hold this line while we're moving around. So now maintaining this line, this mountain pose line, gravitational line, just bring your right knee up without leaning forward or back or side to side. See if you could do that. To do that, you really have to turn on your core muscles and your hip muscles is good for them to challenge them like that. Then lower that leg down and bring your left leg up without leaning back or forward or side to side. Good, and then let's start to pick up the pace now, just lifting one leg and then the other, but staying as tall through that ankle line as you can without being rigid in your neck. All right, now as you pick up the pace even just a little bit quicker with your legs, start to stretch your arms forward and back as your legs move. And then arms out to the side and in. So we're just gonna warm up the shoulders in different range of motion. And then up overhead and back to your chest. Good, then hug your right knee up to your chest. Then step your right leg back into a lunge. Lower the knee down and inhale your right arm up. And as you exhale, step forward. Hug your left knee up. Then step your left leg back into a lunge and raise your left arm up. And step forward. Hug your right knee up. Step your right leg back into just a little lunge. Lower your knee and raise your arm. Exhale, step up. Inhale your left knee up. Step back into a lunge, lower your knee down and raise your left arm up. Step up to the mountain. Take your feet outer hip distance apart. Take your arms out in front of you, like Frankenstein arms. Stay tall through the ankle line. As you, as you inhale, start to sit your hips back like you're sitting in a chair pose. Hold there. Now see if you can get lower. Come back up to stand, release your arms at your side. Inhale, sit back into your chair. Eight times into chair. Exhale, come back up to stand. Inhale, sit back. Exhale, come up. 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 Inhale, sit back on this last one and hold. Hold there. Then turn your thumbs up and reach your arms up to the ceiling. Hold there. Good, get into your heels. Feel that weight in your heels. Now shift your hips back and down just a little bit more like you're gonna sit back into a chair. And then come all the way up to stand and fold forward. Inhale, make a flat back. Step back into plank pose one leg at a time. 
open up wide across your chest as you hold in your plank and raise your right leg one inch without your hips twisting. Keep all that space across your collarbones, across the top of your blades. Change legs, raise your left leg one inch. Don't let the hips twist. Set that foot down, lie down onto your belly. Stretch your arms out in front of you. Press the tops of your feet down and lift your inner kneecaps up off the mat. Turn the outer thighs down so it's like you're getting broad across the base of your butt cheek right here. Then lift your belly up to your heart, press your hands down and lift your chest towards your hands. Good. Now as you exhale, bend your elbows back into a W shape. Just like this at your side. There you go. Yeah, and hold them there. And then as you inhale, stretch your arms forward, straight out in front of you. Exhale, bend them back. Inhale, stretch them forward and reach your toes even longer. Exhale, bend them back. Feel those back muscles work. Inhale, reach them forward. Exhale, bend them back. Inhale, reach them forward. Good, just 40 more times. Exhale, bend them back, I'm kidding. Inhale, reach them forward. Two more, In, exhale, bend back. Inhale, reach forward. Exhale, bend back and hold, hold. Now pull your elbows as far away from each other as you can. And then rotate the wrist away from the floor. Keep pulling those elbows, keep pulling them. Good, lower yourself down, Whew, this is intense. Nice job, stretch back to down dog. So we're just doing the complement to what the vinyasa yoga practice. So the vinyasa yoga, we're like doing a lot to like strengthen this type of movement. So we're kind of like working on strengthening this type of movement today instead, uh, which you had to be looking at the camera to see what this and this was. <laughs> so, okay, if you saw that. We'll look forward, jump or step to the front of your mat. Inhale, Arda. Exhale, fold. Inhale, chair pose, bend your knees, sit back. Good, press to stand, Samastiti. Externally rotated poses, step your right foot back about four feet. Parallel your feet and spread your arms. Good, stand tall to that ankle line again. Then turn your left toes in a little and turn your right leg all the way out. Bend your right knee and bring your right forearm to your thigh. Reach your left arm over your ear. Hold here, modified extended side angle. The tricep turns inward towards your face so that there's space across the back of your neck. Your upper trap gets to release that way. Good, press into your feet, come back up to stand. Turn your feet to the other side. Bend your left knee and bring your forearm down onto your thigh. Reach your right arm all the way over. Look for a long line from your back ankle all the way out through the crown of your head. Inhale, come back up. Turn your feet to the right. <clears throat> this time, keep your right leg straight, but look down at your thigh and turn it all the way out so the center of your thigh points out in the same line as your big toe. Then reach out for triangle pose. So in triangle pose, you don't want your spine to round at all like this. You wanna be lengthening and reaching your chest towards that wall. So you can come up onto your fingertips or you can put your hand onto a block, whatever feels appropriate for you. But you want both sides of your chest to reach away from your hips instead of this right chest to sink onto your right thigh. Reach it forward. Now bring your left hand to your hip. Bend your right knee, look down at the floor. Slide your hand or your block a foot in front of your pinky toe and step right up. Turn that right thigh out again. Then raise your back heel up to hip height. Now see if you can reach that right chest forward again. It takes that same strength and flexibility that you learned in triangle that we've been working. Just two more breaths. Good, bend your knee and come right back to warrior two. Slide your foot back. Open up your arms, hold, balance the head up on top of the spine. Then straighten your right leg, 
turn your feet to the other side, bend the left knee, no, straight left, left, left leg, and turn that left thigh. Good, then reach out over the leg and place your hand down. Wherever feels best for you, that you can get that length. All right, here we go. Now put your hand on your hip, bend your left knee, look down, slide your hand a foot in front of your pinky toe. Step up to balance on that leg. Balance your left hip right over your left ankle and turn the thigh out like you practice in triangle. Then get the back heel up in line with your hip or an inch above if you can. Reach that left chest forward. Then start to turn the back ribs down, the front ribs up. Hold there, stay steady. Three more breaths. Two, one, bend your knee, slide back to warrior two, spread your arms out. Good, stand tall as you let the left thigh bend deeper, tall through the spine. Good, then from here, we're gonna take an optional vinyasa. Circle your hands to the mat, step back to down dog or take a vinyasa. Then inhale into plank pose. Come into plank on your forearm. Set one elbow down and then the other. Roll onto the outside edge of your left foot. Take your right arm up. Angle that left forearm in as much as you need to to protect your shoulder. Bring your head back in line with your spine. Push through your heels, get long. All right, good, change sides. Bring your right elbow down, take your left arm up. Feel in your body that you still have that gravitational line from where we were standing in mountain earlier. The head is back in line with the ankles, everything in that tall in that ankle line. That's gonna help to strengthen the right muscles in your chest and in your back so that you're not strengthening poor posture. Bring your elbow back down, hold there. Now raise your right leg up just an inch without hunching over. Keep the blades on the back, keep the chest open. Change legs, left leg up one inch, hold strong in your core. Good, set that foot down, now lower your hips down, sphinx pose, let your chest open. Just take a few moments here, breathe. All right, now curl your toes, lift your knees, lift your hips up, come back into plank on your forearms, elbows right under the shoulders. Now interlock your hands and walk into down dog on your forearms. Lift your hips up high, press the elbows down, traps out of the neck, hold there. Breathe. Good, then set your knees down. So what this is doing, being able to hold in that position and lift your tail up, rest in child's pose, is gonna to start to train your muscles in your arms and in your spine so that when we go to practice shirshas and headstand, your body will already be ready to do it. So it's a really good pose to start to practice if you wanna develop strength and stamina for shirshas. All right, now sit in dandas and sit with your legs stretched out in front of you. Slide your hands a foot behind you and turn your shoulder heads back. So in this next exercise, it's really important that you listen to your body and observe what's happening. From your low abs, start to slide your knees up towards you and put your feet onto the ground. Then press down into your feet evenly. Now, this is phase one of this back strengthening exercise, shoulder strengthening exercise, just to hold a long spine and keep your shoulders rotated here with your feet down. Phase two, you'll lift your hips up a couple inches and still keep turning the shoulders so that your back is being strengthened like we want it. The neck is long, the spine is long. Phase three, you could lift your hips up higher and maybe even all the way up. Whichever one you're doing, you're still looking for that same open chest posture. Good, lower your hips back down, take a breath. 
We're gonna go up one more time. So hold here with the chest open, phase one. Lift the hips up just a couple inches, phase two. Or lift the hips up all the way, phase three. And hold for five, four, three, two, you got it. Lift the hips and lower yourself down. Great job. All right, now sit with your legs stretched straight out in front of you. Just take a moment here in Dandasan. This is a great core strengthening pose as well. As you lift through all four sides of your waist, you're teaching the muscles in your middle what it's like to hold your spine erect. So naturally those muscles are getting strengthened to sit like this. The pull of the hamstrings wanna pull the spine under. So that effort to sit upright is creating spinal health, spinal stability. So good to be able to sit like this, upright with your legs stretched out in front of you. If it's too much to have the legs totally straight, just put a little bend in the knees, that's fine too. Okay, from here, let's go into Bharavadrasan. Sweep your feet over to the left and twist to your right. So feet over to the left like, a, like you're a mer person, and then left hand to the outside of your knee, right hand behind you. Dandasan is the foundation for all the seated poses because we're looking for that same quality of Dandasan. So you're growing tall through the ribs, sit bones reaching towards the floor, straight down. Good, come back to center, change sides, take the legs over to the right and twist to your left. Also, in one of my favorite books on yoga, by Gita Iyengar, which is BKS Iyengar's daughter. In the, her preliminary course, the, these seated poses that we're gonna do next, these are some of her foundational seated poses. So these seated poses will help to open you up for all the other seated poses. And they also help to open up the places that we all get chronically sticky. And when we start to open up those chronically sticky places, we're starting to wake up the spine, the dormant energy in the spine and as we do that, it starts to change like our whole vibe. Come back to center and stretch your legs straight out in front of you. Okay, the last one in this sequence is Janu Shishasan. So we're gonna go into it from Upavista though. So take your legs wide apart as you sit, but like no more than 100 degrees. If you can go wider than 100 degrees, that's fine, but don't do it for this. See if you can sit tall in that position. Then bring your right heel in towards your pubic bone. Turn to face your left leg. And we're just gonna work on sitting up tall at first, straight up over your sit bones. Let both of your sit bones reach straight down, let your thighs descend, release away from each other. Now see if you can walk your hands a little closer to your foot, like maybe in line with your shin or your ankle while still making a flat back reaching the sit bones down, pulling up, and just hold there for a few breaths. Good, then walk your hands back towards you, and change sides, stretch that right leg back out, bend your left knee, turn to face your right leg, just sit up straight for a moment. So this is actually a big stretch. This would be like standing and trying to hold your leg out in front of you to be able to sit all the way. So just be able to sit like this, that's a lot of stretch for your hamstring, for your hip. We tend to forget about that. We see like extreme variations of this pose or like people are deep into this pose and we think I have to be in that to get a stretch. That's not how, where it's at in yoga. See if you can walk your hands a little further. Go to the place where you need to, to feel the stretch. Where your hips wanna jump back up, that's where you pause. Let your hips, your thighs descend, grow the spine. You might be very flexible at home. Some of you guys might be very flexible. You could just go all the way into it. That's fine too. Come back up. All right, then cross your legs and fold forward. Last seated pose here. Let your head release. Now, if you have that block at home, you can let your forehead rest onto a block. And that's nice for the neck because it lets the neck start to release its tension.
then come back up. Change the cross of your legs and fold forward. Good, then lie down onto your back for course pose. And just let the body drop now. And like we've been practicing, practice watching your breath. Feel the natural flow of the breath, natural rhythm. And then roll over to your right side and press yourself up to seated. Sit for just a moment with your eyes closed. Feel the effects of your practice today. Then bring your palms together. Thank you, namaste. All right, thank you for watching. Thanks for staying dedicated to your practice and the challenge. Uh, make sure to hit the like button, leave a comment below, let me know what's going on with you and your challenge, and also subscribe to the channel. Hey, this week I wanted to let you know that I'm doing a little health and wellness thing on my Instagram. I'll be posting different things that I do, different um, supplements that I like to take to help keep me healthy in the wintertime when colds are going around. So if you're interested in that, check it out at Timson SE Yoga.